Hey everyone, Spud here from Spud's Games. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video, it's a bit of a follow-up video from the PVM uh, video that I did a couple of weeks ago. Stay tuned. So this is a bit of a follow-up video that I did a couple of weeks ago regarding the PVM pickup that, uh, that I managed to score. Um, two PVMs went into a repair shop to, uh, to a broadcast guy who used to repair these for a living. He still repairs broadcast stuff, but um, obviously much more modern stuff. We're talking OLEDs, etc. But back in his day, um, he actually repaired. He was he was the one of the licensed uh, Sony PVM repair people in Sydney. So uh, he took a look at both of them for me. Uh, both of them I gave to him. One was a 20 inch, and one was this 14 inch. 20 inch we couldn't really repair. The tube was gone in that. Um, what happened was the bottom third of the, the screen had bad convergence and also was out of focus. So we think that had been dropped at some stage. Um, he, he did a thorough testing of it and we just couldn't nut down what the problem was, if there was a problem on the board other than uh, that it was a tube issue. So unfortunately that one's gone pushed into the corner. I did bring it home, I didn't chuck it out. Um, the bezel's still good, labels are still good, terminals are still good, um, boards are obviously still good in it. So I have a lot of spares now. Um, obviously the tube, you know, I can't reuse that, but um, the rest of it I can reuse. So it's going in the corner as a spare. The other one that went into repair was this one. So this is a 14 inch PVM uh, 14, is D14 L2A, sorry, L5A, D14 L5A. And this is what they call a multi-format uh, HD uh, CRT or PVM. And I must say this thing is absolutely brilliant. Um, Unfortunately, it's only 14 inches, so you can't really do a hell of a lot of gaming on it, um, you know, unless you're inside sitting up close to it. But for quality of picture, this thing is probably the best or one of the best PVMs that I've ever seen. So if you go back to my old video, the issue it had was it'd take a long time to warm up, start with the squished out, out of sync screen, slowly come to life um, after a minute or so, and then, and then it would sort of work okay. Turns out when the guy was testing it, the actual heater circuit was the problem. Uh, we, he changed some capacitors in it, which kind of fixed part of it. Anyway, the, what, what he told him was there was a chip uh, on that particular board that needed replacing, so he replaced that and everything worked. He also went over the board itself, uh, all the boards, and there were some more capacitors that he found uh, that he needed to change, so he changed them for me as well. Um, and then when he was testing, he actually shorted out a chip on the neck board, um, so he was good enough to replace that chip for me as well. Set everything up for me and I must say, as I said before, the picture is absolutely fantastic. So for this video at the moment, I've got 240p playing on the Mega Drive there. I think it's Batman versus, uh, sorry, Batman and Robin uh, playing through the Mega Drive. Interesting, this doesn't actually pick up 240p as a signal. It picks up 480i on the screen, but it definitely, it is 240p. Um, and I've got a PlayStation here. The good thing about the PlayStation, it does a lot of different uh, signals or outputs. So um, I think it pretty much does 480p right up to 1080i. So I can go through and I can pick different formats from the PlayStation to be able to display on this one to show you guys the true multi-format features of this PVM. So let's grab the tripod off the camera. Uh, tripod off the camera. Let's grab the camera off the tripod uh, and we'll do a bit of a walk around and I'll show you what this thing looks like. All right, so here we are. We're going to be a walk around. Now, to control this, all the controls are on the side. So there's buttons down here and buttons down here. You can probably just see them. They don't. You can't really see them in the light here. Um, they are quite faint, but they're definitely there. Um, and you can turn them on and off by pressing. There's a control button up here. Now it's pretty hard to pick up on the camera, but trust me, they do light up. You see, it's in a really nice condition. We'll just go around here to the back. We'll show you the inputs. I'll try not to trip over stuff. So coming around the back, you can see the amount of inputs there we've got. I'll just slide my hand out of here. So we've got, you know, you've got your composite video over here. You've got your S-video up the top of that. Uh, your audio inputs down the bottom. Then we've got the RGB slash component inputs over here, um, as well as sync, um, sorry, out, out, and then sync over here, as well as sound, and then up here, 
we've got our SDI card that's also plugged in. So that's it for the inputs at the back. Um, as I said, really nice condition. Let's walk around to the front again. You guys get a good feel of what this monitor looks like. So before we get into too much, let's throw the 240p test suite on. Um, I'll just zoom in here. And I apologize for that flicker. I just can't seem to get this bloody camera to sync. But anyway, um, you can see, look at this camera here, you can see how sharp the image is on these. I think it sits at about 800 TVL. And the colors probably aren't quite, I'm looking at the screen, are much more vibrant than what the camera's picking up. So, But you can see how sharp the image is. So it gives you a good idea. So here's the grid. Um, once again, you can see how nice and sharp this image is. I apologize for that flicker. There's no convergence issues in the corners. That red is super vibrant. The whites are super bright um, and clear. And it's, it's just a really, really crisp image. So when we're looking to get into the service menu, like a menu if we ever do want to adjust anything, and I apologize here, the lights are shining. So I've just got to find the right buttons. Uh, pretty sure you've got to bring up the menu by pressing the menu button. The enter button down here along with the degauss button, which is over here, should now switch it into service mode. And you can see this one down here. This is the, uh, where is it? There should be a deflection. Detection, decoder level, decoder level, white balance. So deflection here, DEF. That's the one you would go to to give all your um, geometry settings to get into it. So pretty straightforward I'm not going to go into it I don't need to set anything because uh, this monitor is pretty much spot on so what I'll do to get out of it just menu and oh, sorry enter and degauss again takes me out of the service menu One other thing to notice here, this actually, to see down in the corner, 48060i, this is 240p, but the TV doesn't recognise that as a proper signal, so um, it is displaying in 240p, you can tell that by the scan lines that's been generated there, or the black lines in between the scan lines, so it's definitely 240p, um, and even in PAL, I'm just flicking my Mega Drive between PAL and NTSC, or 5060Hz, you can see down the bottom here, it's now 57550i, if I take it back up to... Yeah, 60 hertz you see there switched to 480 and 60i but I can guarantee you it is doing um, 240p and the way I can test that is quite simple um, in this 240p test suite I can just jump down to options here I'm pretty sure and I can turn 480i on and you can see there um, I don't have the cameras pick that up but definitely the it's, de it's definitely 480i your scan lines have sort of disappeared and there's that vibration um, happening with what you normally get with 480i. So um, I'll just take it back to 240p, nice and steady, super clear. So now I've got the PlayStation uh, 3 plugged in, make sure we're in component by hitting the component button. Um, once that comes up on the screen, we know that we're in it. I'm just gonna hold the power button on the PlayStation to throw it into um, a component signal rather than HDMI you'll hear a beep once I hold the power button down that should switch it now we can see it now coming up 57550i and this should display the PlayStation which there we go okay so the PlayStation plugged in I'll just grab the remote so I'll just press the PlayStation button Okay, so what we can do with the PlayStation is we can go over to settings, we can adjust the display settings now. 
so we can trust the video output. Okay, we want to do component. Okay, so we want to change. Okay, so we can pick any of these. So 576p, I just press across. The CRT will do its thing. And now we're in 570p progressive mode. Now, I don't know if you can uh, pick that up or not, but that's super clear. Uh, much more clearer than what the 575 uh, I was. That 576p is super clear. Um, I can change it to 16 by 9. The CRT, I can, well, it's actually stretched at the moment, but I can change it to 16 by 9 on here if I wanted to. There we are to match up. Um, or I can turn that back off again. So I'll just jump back out of that. I'll cancel the settings. So we've come back to our 575.50i. We'll change our video output settings, go back up. So we know 576, 575p works. We'll change it again. Oops, sorry, the wrong button. Okay, now we we'll change it down to 720p. Tick that button. CRT will do its thing, and automatically it's gone into widescreen for us. Um, I don't think if I hit widescreen on this, I don't think it will do anything. It won't the CRT automatically recognize 720p being a widescreen format. Um, so I will, I can read the screen, I'll keep it there, and I don't know if you guys can see that, but that, I'm just gonna try and zoom in a little bit here, and you can get a nice clear picture of it. It'll come right in. It's really clear, it's the anti-glare coating, of, unfortunately on the CRT is making it a little bit blurry, but yeah, it's super crisp, you know, that, that lettering is super nice around there. So the 720p works. So I'll leave it in 720p. We'll finish. What I might do is I might throw a game on. So here we are, Way of the Samurai. Um, you can see here, 720p, we've got it in. Looks fantastic on a CRT. Um, blacks are really black. I'm not sure whether... Um, the camera's picking up how nice this looks, but it does look absolutely fantastic. Um, comparing it back to an LCD panel back in the day, it's night and day. I wish I had a CRT, you know, 42 inches wide um, of this particular quality because it does look absolutely fantastic. So I hope that gives you guys a good understanding of what this monitor is about. Uh, I'll give you an understanding why people pay so much for these monitors. Um, I had no idea. I've never really played a PlayStation 3 on CRT, um, but seeing it in person, I mean, I mean, it's only a small screen, but seeing how black the blacks were, um, you know, just the quality of picture was just was fantastic. I'm sure once I uh, edit this video, I'll try and get it as good as I can, but the, the camera's just not going to do the justice um, that it deserves for the quality of picture. Uh, being 14 inch, it's pretty pointless having a, as a gaming monitor. So this will probably be more of a testing monitor, I'll play around with a few different things. I would like to see if I can get a PC somehow to display on it. Um, it does suit the resolution, so um, whether I do that via you know, a HDMI to SDI converter or VGA to SDI converter or something, I'm obviously going to have to use an interface there somewhere uh, between the two, but you know, let's see if we can get a PC displayed at some point as well and see how that looks on this particular monitor. So that's it. Um, it's the end of the video. Uh, I hope it gave you a good understanding of what this monitor is about. And um, until the next video, I'll see you then.